Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Lauren Bobert? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Lauren Bobert, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Lauren Bobert was born on December 19, 1986, in Alamante Springs, Florida. Her family moved to Denver, Colorado when she was 12 years old. In 2003, the family moved to Rifle, Colorado, which is about three hours west of Denver. In 2004, Lauren had a son with a man named Jason Bobert. She dropped out of high school and worked as an assistant manager at a fast food restaurant. In 2005, Lauren married Jason. They lived in Silt, Colorado, which is 10 miles east of Rifle. The couple went on to have three more sons. In 2013, Lauren and Jason opened a restaurant called Shooter's Grill in the town of Rifle. They eventually opened two other restaurants. At the time making this video, the couple does not own any of the restaurants. Lauren developed an interest in politics and adopted a far-right position, although she doesn't believe she is far-right. One of her main issues of interest was gun rights. She could often be seen carrying a pistol in a holster on her hip. Lauren launched a campaign for the U.S. House of Representatives in December of 2019. She wanted to represent Colorado's 3rd Congressional District. A month before the primary, Lauren earned her GED. She would go on to win the Republican nomination in what the media referred to as a stunning upset. In the general election, Lauren defeated her opponent and became a U.S. representative. When Lauren ran again in 2022, she was once again victorious, but this time by a very small margin. 327,000 votes were cast. Lauren won by only 546 votes. In May 2023, Lauren filed for divorce from her husband, Jason, citing irreconcilable differences. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On Sunday, September 10, 2023, Lauren was on a date with a bar owner named Quinn Gallagher. They were watching the musical Beetlejuice at a theater in Denver, Colorado. Lauren attracted some negative attention from other theater goers. Two of them made three different complaints to theater personnel. Lauren was accused of singing, vaping, and video recording the musical. Evidently, recording the performance was a violation of some policy. Ushers addressed the vaping issue with Lauren during the intermission. In addition, a pregnant woman who was seated behind Lauren asked her to stop vaping, but Lauren refused. During the second act of the musical, Lauren and Quinn were asked by security to leave the theater. Lauren refused. But after the police were called, Lauren and her date departed. As Lauren was being escorted out, she allegedly said, Do you know who I am? I am on the board, and I will be contacting the mayor. She appeared to extend her middle finger to one of the theater employees. Initially, Lauren denied causing a disturbance or vaping. She said, quote, I plead guilty to laughing and singing too loud, unquote. She also denied making the comments like, do you know who I am? Surveillance video was released of the incident, which supported the allegations that Lauren had been disruptive. It also revealed some groping activity between Lauren and Quinn as they were seated in the theater. Lauren was criticized by many people for her behavior. I guess they did not appreciate her touching moment. After the video was released, Lauren Bobert changed her tune. She said, quote, The past few days have been difficult and humbling, and I'm truly sorry for the unwanted attention my Sunday evening in Denver has brought to the community. While none of my actions or words as a private citizen that night were intended to be malicious or meant to cause harm, the reality is they did, and I regret that." Unquote. Lauren talked about how her public and difficult divorce created a challenging personal time for her and her family. She said, quote, I've tried to handle it with strength and grace as best I can, but I simply fell short of my values on Sunday." Unquote. To explain her initial denial, 
Lauren said, quote, whether it was the excitement of seeing a much anticipated production or the natural anxiety of being in a new environment, I genuinely did not recall vaping that evening, unquote. It sounds like she wanted people to believe she was suffering from Beetlejuice-induced memory loss, but she was probably having complete excuse-induced memory loss. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, the man who Lauren was dating, Quinn Gallagher, is a Democrat who owns a bar. Lauren, of course, is a Republican. Quinn's bar once hosted an event that was contrary to Lauren's beliefs. When referring to a possible continuation of the dating relationship, Lauren said, quote, Ultimately, all future date nights have been canceled, and I learned to check party affiliations before you go on a date, unquote. She continued and talked about the musical, saying, It was mostly a lovely time, and I've taken responsibility for my actions. I'd love to know how the musical ended, and I encourage people to go and see it, unquote. Spoiler alert for the Beetlejuice musical. It ends with an annoying person no longer being someplace they initially wanted to be. Lauren did not need to see the ending. She already acted it out herself. Item number two. It's not clear how the theater incident will affect Lauren's future. She may have lost one speaking engagement. Lauren was scheduled to speak at the Texas Youth Summit at the end of September 2023, but now she is no longer listed as a speaker. This is a two-day conference where conservative figures talk to teenagers and young adults. Its goal is to, quote, counter the effects of the left and begin to win back the hearts and minds of our nation's most precious resource, our future generations, unquote. Considering that Lauren was elected by a narrow margin, her antics in the theater may have more severe consequences than simply being denied an opportunity to win back hearts and minds. This incident could very well make getting reelected more difficult for her than sitting still during a musical. Item number three, Lauren Boebert is known for being abrasive, crude, offensive, and she appears to have trouble telling the truth. Lauren has been caught demonstrating potentially deceptive behavior prior to her denial about vaping at the musical. For example, Lauren once claimed that she volunteered at a local jail for seven years. Attendance logs indicated that she was at the jail nine times over the course of about two and a half years. Lauren missed a vote on the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023. She initially said that she had been detained, but later she said that she deliberately did not vote as a no-show protest. This doesn't appear to be true. Lauren was spotted by reporters running up the steps to the House and being informed that voting was over. Item number four. As a representative, Lauren has taken a position which is more extreme than the majority of her colleagues. A few examples. She has attempted to impeach Joe Biden on two occasions. She has made the statement, I love President Trump. Lauren supports the idea of Christian nationalism. She said that she was, quote, tired of this separation of church and state junk. It's not in the Constitution, unquote. At one time, she appeared to believe in the QAnon conspiracy theory. She also believed in a lesser known conspiracy theory about Bill and Hillary Clinton, which falsely claimed that the couple murdered as many as 50 political opponents. Lauren wants to eliminate the U.S. Department of Education. It's almost like she examined the problems in the United States and thought to herself, this must be due to people learning things. Item number five, what does the incident at the theater reveal about Lauren Boebert? This is just a theory, my opinion. There is this sense that Lauren does not recognize how other people perceive her. She doesn't have the insight to understand how her mannerisms, attitudes, and statements may offend people. It's also possible that she just doesn't care if she offends people. Lauren is confrontational and assertive in a way that shows disrespect. She does not appear to appreciate that she has been elected to an important position. Even though she won her seat by a narrow margin, she engaged in disruptive behavior in a theater for absolutely no reason. There was no upside to her behavior. After being warned to stop, she continued to be disruptive. There is really no excuse for what she did. Lauren wasn't standing up against the values of the left or promoting 
the ideals of the right when she aggravated innocent theater goers. She was simply being impolite and defiant. She believes that she is helping the conservative cause, but she is incorrect. Now moving to my final thoughts. Voters expect a certain level of refinement in a U.S. representative. Lauren has not attained this level. Her resume, which featured an unsophisticated attitude and a poor understanding of political issues, has now been enhanced by being disruptive in public. During the theater incident, Lauren allegedly asked, Do you know who I am? I think a better question would be one directed at Lauren, asking, Do you know who you are? If she could answer the question correctly, a U.S. representative, then maybe she could start acting like one. Those are my thoughts in the case of Lauren Boebert. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.